the zookeeper's problem. In a bustling city with towering skyscrapers and ceaseless traffic, there stood a sanctuary of tranquility and wonder. A renowned zoo. Tourists and locals alike would meander through its vast expanse, gazing at the majestic creatures from distant lands. At the heart of the zoo's operations was a woman named Clara. She wasn't just any zookeeper. She was the chief zookeeper, a title she had earned through years of dedication and an unparalleled understanding of animals. Under her guidance, the zoo flourished. However, behind the scenes, Clara was grappling with an increasingly pressing issue. Each night, after the gates had closed and the visitors had left, the animals began to display peculiar behavior. The flamingos, typically poised and elegant, would dance in frenzied circles. The monkeys, instead of settling into sleep, engaged in what seemed like deep, animated discussions. Even the stoic elephants would parade around, trumpeting loudly. At first, Clara dismissed these nightly occurrences as mere anomalies. But as the days turned into weeks, she grew concerned. It wasn't just the animals' strange activities that troubled her. Their demeanor during the day started to change. They appeared exhausted, their eyes dull, their movements sluggish. Determined to get to the root of the problem, Clara decided to spend a night at the zoo. Armed with night vision goggles and a notebook, she stationed herself at a central observation point. As the clock struck midnight, the zoo transformed. The animals convened in the main clearing, and to Clara's astonishment, they began to communicate with one another. The lion roared, the parrots squawked, and the snakes hissed, all partaking in an interspecies assembly. Slowly, Clara began to piece together the puzzle. The animals, it seemed, were discontented. The city's noise, pollution, and the constant stream of visitors were taking a toll on their well-being. They yearned for more than just a facsimile of their natural habitats. They longed for a genuine connection to the world outside their enclosures. As dawn approached, the animals dispersed, returning to their daily facades, leaving. Clara deep in thought. She had to find a solution. Not just for the zoo's reputation, but for the animals she deeply cared for. Over the next few weeks, Clara implemented a series of changes. She collaborated with environmental engineers to create more naturalistic habitats and introduced a new visitors program. Instead of merely observing, visitors were now educated about each animal's natural behavior, the challenges they faced in the wild and conservation efforts. But Clara's most revolutionary initiative was the Night in the Wilderness program. Once a week, the zoo's central area was transformed into a camping ground. Visitors, under guided supervision, could experience a night amidst the animals, observing their nocturnal behaviors. The results were astonishing. The animals, sensing the shift in atmosphere and the genuine interest from the visitors, gradually returned to their normal selves. The nights of frenzied activity ceased, replaced by the soothing sounds of a more natural existence. Clara's endeavors not only revitalized the zoo but also redefined its purpose.
It was no longer just a place of observation but of understanding and coexistence. And while the city outside continued its relentless pace within the zoo's walls, a harmonious balance was found. Reminding everyone of the delicate interplay between man, animal, and nature. The missing diary. Amid the labyrinthine alleyways of an old town, Eleanor's quaint bookstore thrived. An oasis of knowledge for the inquisitive. A collector of rare books, Eleanor often scoured estate sales for hidden gems. Her latest acquisition was a collection of old tomes and manuscripts from a recently auctioned manor. As she sifted through them, one particular leather-bound book caught her eye. It wasn't like the others, filled with tales of far-off lands or intricate illustrations. Instead, the pages contained handwritten entries recounting daily events, dreams, and intimate confessions. It was personal, raw, and compelling. Realizing she had stumbled upon someone's diary, Eleanor felt a pang of guilt. Such intimate revelations were not meant for her eyes. Yet, a recurring theme within the entries intrigued her. A veiled reference to a hidden artifact with unparalleled power. Eleanor pondered her options. She could place the diary back, disregarding its content. But the allure of the artifact and the mystery wrapped around it was too tempting. With the town's rich history of myths and legends, she considered the possibility that the artifact might indeed be real. Collaborating with Patrick, a local historian, and close friend, Eleanor began deciphering the cryptic clues within the diary. Days turned into nights as they poured over Old Town maps, cross-referencing them with the diary's entries. Their research led them to an old, dilapidated chapel on the town's outskirts. Hidden within its crumbling walls, they discovered a secret chamber. The room was empty, save for a stone pedestal at its center. Resting atop it was a simple copper box, its surface weathered and aged. Inside, they found an ornate key, cold to the touch and radiating an otherworldly aura. They soon realized the key wasn't just a relic but the embodiment of the artifact's power. It held the ability to unlock memories, allowing the wielder to relive past experiences or explore the memories of others. Faced with such potent power, Eleanor felt torn. While the possibilities seemed endless, the ethical ramifications were immense. Patrick, too, grappled with the implications. The ability to access anyone's memories could be both a blessing and a curse. But who were they to decide its fate? The duo opted for discretion. Returning the key to its chamber, they sealed the entrance, ensuring its secrecy. They agreed never to disclose their discovery, fearing the potential misuse by those with nefarious intentions. As for the diary, Eleanor placed it in a locked cabinet within her store, a constant reminder of the adventure it had spurred and the responsibility it had entrusted them with. Some secrets, they realized are meant to remain hidden, their allure lying, not in their discovery but in the journey they inspire. Summer camp stories. The crickets sang and the campfire crackled, its warmth chasing away the evening chill. A circle of eager faces, illuminated by the fire's glow, turned towards Jason, the eldest camper. 
It was the tradition of the camp that on the last night, everyone would share a tale. B. It's spooky, funny, or simply bizarre. Lucy went first, her tail sending shivers down spines. She spoke of a shadowy figure that prowled the woods, a whisperer who mimicked voices. As she concluded, the camp was silent, save for the distant hoot of an owl. Tom, known for his wit, quickly lightened the mood. He regaled them with a humorous account of a squirrel that had apparently made it its mission to steal underwear from the boys' cabin, leaving the camp in stitches. But as the night wore on and the stories flowed, it became clear that this was not just a session of tales. It was an unspoken bridge, connecting campers from different backgrounds and cultures. The stories were a medium, allowing glimpses into each other's worlds. Jasmine spoke of her home in the bustling streets of Mumbai, painting a vivid picture of colorful festivals and the aroma of spicy street food. Matteo then transported them to the serene landscapes of Tuscany, with its rolling hills and ancient vineyards. As the hours passed, the tales transitioned from fiction to personal experiences, some heartwarming, others heart-wrenching. There were tales of first loves, lost friendships, dreams achieved, and dreams shattered. Aaliyah, with tears in her eyes, shared her story of escaping conflict in her homeland, and the hope she found in her new country. Her story, though painful, was a testament to human resilience and the universal quest for peace. By the time dawn began to break, a silent bond had formed among the campers. They had laughed together, cried together, and learned the power of storytelling. The campfire, now reduced to glowing embers, had been a witness to a beautiful tapestry of narratives. As the campers returned to their tents, they realized that while their stay had been short, the memories forged would last a lifetime. They had arrived as strangers but would leave as a family, their stories forever intertwined. A Halloween to remember. The moon hung high in the night sky, casting its pale light over the town of Meadowridge. Children ran door to door. There, excited laughter filling the air as they showed off their costumes and collected candy. Among these children was a group of five friends, Sophia, Marcus, Lucy, Ethan, and Naomi. Each had chosen a costume reflecting a character from their favorite book. Sophia was a fierce warrior. Marcus donned the attire of a wise wizard. Lucy transformed into a mischievous pixie. Ethan embodied a valiant knight, while Naomi dazzled as an elegant queen. After collecting an impressive stash of candy, they decided to explore the old Winslow mansion at the edge of town, which was rumored to be haunted. The thrill of adventure combined with the Halloween spirit made it too enticing to resist. Pushing the creaky gates open, they treaded cautiously through the overgrown path leading to the mansion. The house, though long abandoned, seemed to possess an eerie charm. Its once grand architecture was now hidden beneath a blanket of moss and ivy. The group entered, their footsteps echoing through the vast empty halls. The initial fear was soon replaced by awe as they discovered rooms 
filled with ancient artifacts, dusty books, and grand paintings. As they ventured deeper, Lucy found an old music box. On opening it, a haunting melody began to play, echoing through the mansion. It was then they heard it, soft whispers and faint giggles. The atmosphere grew cold, and shadowy figures danced at the periphery of their vision. Terrified, the friends clung to each other. It was Ethan who spotted a diary on a wooden table. As he flipped through its pages, he realized it belonged to Lady Elizabeth Winslow, the last known resident of the mansion. The diary spoke of her grand parties and her love for music and dance. It became evident that the spirits in the mansion weren't malevolent. They were remnants of the past, reliving their joyous moments. Taking a deep breath, Sophia started humming along to the tune of the music box. One by one, the rest joined in. As they sang, the shadowy figures became more pronounced, revealing men and women in exquisite ballroom attire, dancing gracefully. For what seemed like hours, the living and the spectral danced together in harmony. As the first light of dawn began to break, the music faded, and the figures disappeared, leaving the mansion in silence once again. Exiting the mansion, the friends were in a state of disbelief. They had not only faced their fears but had experienced something truly magical. Years later, as adults, they would often recall that Halloween night, not for the candy or costumes but for the enchanting dance they shared with the spirits of the past. It was indeed a Halloween to remember.